Welcome to the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, where we bring you a weekly dose of powerlifting news, tips, and training advice with a touch of 80s rock ballads. This podcast is presented by Team Roar Powerlifting, your source of the most comprehensive coaching and meet day preparation. Here are your hosts, Josh Roar and Laura Sturm. All right, welcome to episode 30 of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Roar. And I'm your other host, Laura Sturm. And today we have Don Nieder, and Don is a Wim Hof Method instructor. And Don joins us from uh, my neighborhood, who knew, right, that yeah. we ended up being um, neighbors. Uh, but Don is a local business owner. He had retired to pursue Wim Hof Method a little bit more, and he's been in Atlanta 20 years. 20 years. And, you know, I'll, I'll let you um, introduce yourself and a little bit about the Wim Hof Method. Thanks, Laura and Josh. I appreciate it. Um, I'm always excited to talk about the method because I'm just, I'm really passionate about it. And as you, you mentioned, I owned a small business in the Norcross area and uh, my mind had really shifted towards, I'd be already become an instructor for the Wim Hof method. It has shifted towards, I know this can help people and I want to get them. And I really, that just kind of became this focus. I was losing my focus on the business, which my partner wasn't happy with. So uh, he came to me with an offer was not awesome, but it was it was a instant yes for me because it allowed me to kind of go pursue what I wanted to do. Was really passionate about the Wim Hof method is very 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 simple, uh, but the 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 benefits are uh, immeasurable. It's basically a combination of breath, mindset, and cold exposure, cold water exposure. But these aren't just because to toughen you up or anything else, because there are specific physiological things that happen inside your body when you do the breathing method when you get into the cold there are certain things that happen that contribute to your your health and, and your mindset awesome so can you talk a little bit about um wim hof himself and how this method got started in the first place yeah it's a really interesting story probably longer than we have time to talk about today but wim's really he, he's in his early 60s he speaks eight languages. He's a very smart guy, but if you meet him, he comes across as just kind of an eccentric. But uh, he's he started in as his teenage years studying uh, uh, Eastern religions and philosophies and and yoga and really kind of getting into it. When other kids were off doing whatever in high school, he was going to the library and, and reading about these things. And uh, he lived in Amsterdam and and. A Sunday morning, he was just compelled to take his clothes off and get into one of the uh, canals in the wintertime. And he just felt this instant connection with the cold. And, you know, over the years, over the next 20 years or so, he just kind of developed this combination of already being familiar with yoga and some of the breathing techniques. So breathing and the cold, but he also understood the power that it had over his mind in terms of letting him gain control over that unconscious mind that's always talking at us and telling us you can't do this you can't do that that's scary let's don't do that let's do this something easier instead and it, it taught him how to tame that that mind and really strengthen that mind body connection then fast forward into the uh, uh, 1990s his wife committed suicide he had four young children uh, so he was kind of it's like you know, you're forced to focus and he used the the cold and the breathing to help him, you know, kind of get through that, get through that traumatic uh, time. Then his children all have, be have become part of his company called Interfire. And uh, Wim was doing a lot. He was very well, very well known locally, really in, in, in Europe. He was very well known. He was the Iceman. That was his nickname because of all these stunts, circus acts that he was doing. That's the way they were looked at. And his son joined the company who he runs the company. He said, no. If you really are passionate, Dad, about bringing this to the world, because Wim does believe that if he could train every mother in the world who in turn would train her children, that disease could be eradicated in two generations. If you really want this to be mainstream, then we need to get science behind it. We need medicine to study you and figure out what's going on and why this works. And so that's where Interfire was developed. And, and Wim has spent his time since that. He's got 26 Guinness World Records. And when I first heard about it, I thought the same thing. This is a this is a, a great trick I can learn. I can bet people in the bar that I can hold my breath longer than they can because of the, the method. And that's what I thought was, you know, that's going to be fun. And then I started reading about the science behind it and understanding really what's happening inside our bodies and why this is something that 
I want to do to contribute to my longevity, a longevity that I can enjoy both physically and mentally. Awesome. So can you talk a little bit about like the breathing protocol itself? I mean, you said there's three aspects of it, the breathing, um, the mindset, and the cold exposure. So let's just talk right. a little bit about the breathing first. Okay. And it's for something that can be so impactful in your life. It is, is very, very simple. Um, and there's, and we can, we can, I can give you more information you can post later, but there's a lot of ways you can self-educate with the Wim Hof method, just Google Wim Hof method, and you'll find lots of free resources. You don't have to pay to go to a class like the classes I teach to learn it. You can learn it on your own. If you want to learn, you know, are you doing it right? Ask questions, be part of a community. You know, there's lots of reasons people like to come to the class and experience it, but there's information out there where you can learn it. The breathing technique is simple. It's, and I'm going to just very simplify it, 30 breaths, but you know, it can be 35, it can be 42, it can be 29. Um, deep breaths, breathing from the abdomen, not chest breathing, but breathing deep, kind of breathing up. You fill your lungs, and just release it. You just release, relax your diaphragm and let the air out. Okay. So you just let it out. So you're letting out 75 to 80% of the oxygen that is in your lungs at the time. So we're going to do 30, 35 of those. And then on the last one, you'll take in a full breath, same way, all the way in, let it go. And then you won't take in more oxygen. You will hold your breath. And the first time you do it, it's really awesome sensation to not be breathing and not feel a need to breathe at the same time. It's really just this very meditative, relaxing state uh, to be in. So this is where a lot of the magic is happening in our body. <laughs> Hello, cat. Um, as we, um, as we go through the breathing, we're activating the parasymp the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight, adrenaline's coming out, uh, cortisol. And at the end, we're kind of resetting the body when we, after we take the, that last breath and we hold it, this is called the retention breath. As long as you can hold it, you do. It doesn't matter if it's 30 seconds or three minutes, whatever it is, you listen to your body and you follow your body. And then when you get that strong urge to breathe, not that first flutter, I think I need to take a breath, but when you absolutely, I've got to take a breath, then you take a full breath in and you hold it in for 10 to 15 seconds. Just kind of, you're tightening your abdomen, but you're not squeezing or pushing anything to the head. Just kind of tighten the abdomen and hold it for 10 or 15 seconds. That kicks in the parasympathetic nervous system, relaxes the body, reduces the heart rate and calms you. And just, then you let it go. And that's one round. And we typically try to do three rounds, three rounds a day. Okay. So as I said, it's very straightforward. Right, and I, I downloaded an app um, that actually went through all the basics and you could follow along. And I, I found that actually really helpful. And there's a little timer. So you could actually right, see yeah. how long you're holding yeah. your wrap. If you go to Wim's website, uh, wimhoffmethod.com, he's got a lot of animated videos that, that either are describing the science or they have a, um, a breathing. Yes, he's talking about the breathing and how to do it. Then they have the, they call it the breathing bubble. It's just another app mm -hmm. that a lot of people like to use to just to kind of time the in and out with whim uh of, of, there's no set pace you have to, to breathe at you don't have to go fast and you or you can go slow i've uh, i've done it on an airplane sitting in the middle seat between people going super slow and they didn't even know what i was doing all the way into a full breath and letting it go so it's it's very what feels best for you and i i need to throw this in before i forget it um never ever practice the breathing while you're standing or you're walking or you're driving, always sitting down or laying down in a safe, comfortable environment and not near water. There is a, it's a controlled hyperventilation and there is a risk though. I've never witnessed it has never happened to me except intentionally. There's some advanced techniques that we do that we teach where you can intentionally make yourself pass out if you want, but not doing the Wim Hof method, the way we're, we teach it, we're, the way we're talking about today. But, it could conceivably happen. So don't ever do it near water. Uh, but again, always sitting down or lying down in a safe environment. All right. So you do the breathing in the morning, generally, right? But right. you could do it really probably anytime. Correct. Um, and then do you, um, 
does it matter when the shower is or when the cold exposure is? Is that a daily thing? Yeah, I, I do it daily. And it's, um, you know, I kind of go by what feels like what my body needs at the time. In the summertime, I will do it twice a day. I'll, I, I have a converted chest freezer that I will get into that I keep the water in there in the 40s. And I, in the summertime, I'll get in there twice a day. I get in there in the morning because it just, it energizes me. It just like wakes me up and gets me excited for the day. And then I'll do it at night and, for, and it calms me. I mean, the exact same ice bath, but it's, it's kind of in that case, providing what my, my body needs or my mind needs. So I'll do it twice. The so wintertime, I'll do it. I won't even do it every day. I'll do it every three or four days because actually the benefits you get from getting into the cold. I take cold showers every day. I don't get into an ice bath every day. Uh, and I do those at night mm -hmm. before bedtime. It really helps me get into a nice deep sleep as well. Right. And then going through the app, it kind of had a, a, a challenge where I started out really at five seconds and moving up five seconds. And so what did uh, you do, like run your shoulder under the water? <laughs> and that was uh, no, I just kind of, I turned it down lower. I, I took a warm shower. Then I said, okay, I'm going to do this. Turn it down to a, a cold, but yet moderately uncomfortable place. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, now I'm going. And then I turned it down to as cold as it could get while there's still water coming out. And said, I'm going to make it through five seconds. And five seconds, actually, I was like, oh, that's not that bad. So I, I think the first time I did it, I went like 10 or 15 seconds. And then I just gradually went up every five seconds um, every day. And I kind of stopped a little bit around a minute because then it started getting a little real. Right. And I am a, a person that has hated, 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 like cold anything. Like Josh will tell you, I'm always the biggest wuss. Um, when it comes to anything cold. So, you know, the gradual building up to that. Um, and now I'm regularly at a three minute shower. And uh, I did my first five minute shower yesterday just because I was just like, eh, I'm here. I want to see what this is like and if I can do it. Because there's some things that make me go, oh, I can't do that. You know, for the first time I did the 30 second shower, I'm like, I'm not staying here for 30 seconds. So I'm like, oh, actually, yeah, it's not that yeah. bad. Well, you know, the um, a lot of people who do come to the classes, it, it is certainly to fine tune their practice of the Wim Hof method, make sure they're, they're I've answered their questions that, you know, they're, they're following the, the, the protocol, but really is to get into the ice bath with others there because they are same as you, just they hate the cold and it helps having a group kind of a community when you're getting in and, you know, cheer them on and, and get out and, you know, like, all right, I did it. Yeah, definitely did. Um, when I went to the class, I was like, oh, this is the part that I'm all nervous about. Everyone's nervous about it. And, um, you know, in hindsight, I'm like, it really wasn't that bad. Um, I think if I had a horse trial, I could, I would probably want to do it like once a week, yeah. but I, I don't right now. And I'm about to move. So I'm not going to buy anything big like well, that. Well, well, back to the showers, the, um, is what's suggested is, you know, take as long and as hot a shower as you want, but always finish on cold. And then if it's whether it's 30 seconds or, or a minute or, or five minutes, finish on the cold. But don't, don't go back to the warm after you finish on cold just to warm up again. But finish on cold, turn your shower off and, and get out. Well, and I feel like after I do that, I, I almost get really warm right after. I don't walk around like freezing for, um, although, yeah. you know, my hands and feet are freezing all the time. And Dan always... Um, recoils from me when <laughs> at night They're like oh don't touch me um but i get really kind of warm and it's very um kind of refreshing and calming and it's like my nighttime routine now yeah it is and it's uh the um i, I do the same thing i come out and i i, I keep my house pretty cold because more it's more comfortable and my, my family has become used to it um so at night we always we keep it cold in the house and i, I come out of the shower thinking oh wow i'm just gonna and I'm not, I'm not colder. I'm like you said, I'm, I feel warmer. So Josh, don't you want to just jump in and take a cold shower tonight and try it? So, you know, funny, I actually, uh, right before we started recording, I jumped in the shower. I was going to do, you know, five, 10, 20 seconds of cold, um, <laughs> stood under the hot water for about 20 minutes and then chickened out and got out. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. and when I talk to people, I'm like, that's the part where they're, they're like, ah, I'm not doing that cold water part. And I, I got to say, it's really, it's really not that bad that when you first, the first few days when you're adjusting to it, you're like, ah, this is real. But then it's just really, it's not that bad. 
Yeah, and and Josh, start with your legs. Don't don't think yeah, I've got to put my whole body under that water because the shoulders in the back are the ones that just kind of you know are seem to be more sensitive to the cold water. So just start with your legs and your calves, and you know eventually move up as you get more comfortable with it. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a less threatening way to to get started. Yeah. Right, and I think sometimes we tell ourselves stories about how bad something's going to be, and then you go and do it. Oh and yeah. Like, oh, sure. We build that. it up. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's some of the mindset stuff that also comes into play right. with all of that. So um, why should anyone do this? Well, and I guess the thing that really kind of drew me to it is when I heard, when I read about that, um, that study that was done um, with um, kind of a control group with Wim Hof and a, um, he taught people the, the method and then he taught a, another group. Well, he didn't teach the other group the method yet. And then they all got exposed to E. coli. Can you talk right. a little bit about that? Sure. That was one of the first studies when his son was saying, look, we need to get science on board and behind it. And then start getting some published scientific papers. And Wim will offer himself up to any reputable university or research uh, facility to see what's happening. Um, and there's always there's stuff that's ongoing. There is right now some some new studies that are ongoing, but they always take time. But one of the the, the first one, and really a very impactful one, was at Radabad University in Amsterdam, where they injected Wim. They had heard about Wim. They're familiar with Wim, and he was saying that he could influence his his immune system. And they were saying, yeah, right. So the the doctors invited him in. They had a test where they injected him with a dead E. coli bacteria, and everybody they injected with get sick and their body ramps up and they fight, they get fever, they get nauseous, they get cramps and chills. And then after about three hours, the body realizes false alarm and it goes away. Well, they invited Wim in, they, they did the injection with Wim and Wim got a mild headache for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And that was his only response to it. So they're like, well, you're the ice man. You know, you can, you know, you're different than the rest of us. He goes, no, I'm not at all. I can train anybody to do this. They said, great, train them, come back in a year or two, however long it takes, and we'll, we'll test them. He said, no, I can do it in a week. So Wim gets student volunteers. He uh, takes them to Poland. He has a facility there. We, we, he takes winter expeditions like they're there right now, climbing Mount Shasta in, in the wintertime in their shorts. Um, and he uh, trained them. And then he sent them home and they practiced for a few more days. So after 10 days, they came back to the university. They took 12 of the 18 that, who had been trained by WIM and they had similar results. They all dampened their immune response to this dead E. coli bacteria to different degrees, but all significantly below what they typically experience. And that really led to, a. and I have all these published papers. They're all on WIM's website, actually. Um, the, the published uh, medical paper, peer reviewed paper that was issued as a result of that, that it was the first time that they've, it has been proven by science that, that humans can influence their immune system. Okay, the autoimmune system is thought to be auto. And there are ways that we can, you know, this is a, it's a, it's a biohack, it's, we're hacking into it and all for the benefit of our, of our health. Awesome. And this is one of the many studies that have been done on WIM. So how would you think an athlete could benefit from this? You know, I, I, I won't categorize myself as an athlete, but I, I did run my first marathon last year as a, a challenge to myself. And I, I, I do run and I, I, I try to stay active. The, um, but from a competitive perspective, the one is staying healthy. All right. So we, you know, I don't, I'm not talking about broken bones or pulled muscles, but you know, disease can interrupt any training schedule. So we want to stay healthy in the first place. So just practicing the breathing method three times, it's not going to guarantee you're not going to get sick. You're not going to get the flu. I got COVID. I had COVID in November, um, but it will help your body be prepared and to help. And I had very minimal symptoms and all my symptoms were come and gone within three days. Uh, so it's, I attribute that to, you know, practicing the method and strengthening my immune system. So it's prepared. Uh, my lungs are super strong. Okay. So it's one to stay healthy. And the other is, I think a lot of it is mindset and, and the, the cold, of course, athletes have been using cold for a long time to help their bodies heal. 
So, I mean, there's that component to it, but that's not why we get into the cold because there's some physiological changes. It's, it's like lifting weights for your immune, for your uh, cardiovascular system. So if you want to strengthen your blood flow to all parts of your body that maybe I have capillaries that haven't seen blood in decades that I'm, I'm feeding blood to now. So between the breathing and the strengthening of my lungs and filling my lungs with oxygen and the cold of strengthening my cardiovascular system in both the breathing and the cold reduced inflammation in your blood, which is a, just a gateway to many uh, bad, bad diseases. But I think probably the, if that's not enough, the, to me, the number one, and on top of that, if you order now, the, 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 the number one thing that I think that it can provide to athletes is, is their mindset. The, when you practice the method, you, you, I, and I didn't go into it with this intention, but I've come to the conclusion for me personally, the most impactful part of the Wim Hof method, the three pillars of the Wim Hof method of my life is the mindset because I have created this mind body connection that I never had. I've learned to tame that subconscious voice that's constantly, I mentioned earlier, you know, in our ear uh, in, a, in usually in a negative way. Uh, I've learned to kind of uh, live in the present moment to put a, a, a space between stimulus and response. If somebody says something that makes me angry or cuss me off in traffic, I have just that gap to respond much, you know, less, not, not aggressively. Okay. Or if I'm in a conversation or in an argument, then it gives you that moment to not say something you wish you hadn't said. So, and it gives you that mindset that can do, that can do it. It gives you that. I challenge myself every year to do something hard, to do something that scares me, to do something I don't want to do. And this year, as you know, I'm, I'm hiking the Appalachian Trail. That's my challenge. I leave in three weeks and I, I can't wait. But I know, even though the 80% of the people who don't complete the trail quit for mental reasons, meaning they gave up. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's too wet. It's too miserable. Too many bugs, whatever it is. And they, get, they leave the trail, not because of injuries. So I already know going into it, short an injury that causes me to come off the trail, I will complete the hike because I miss my mindset knows I will do it. Mm. I um, think that's mindset is, is huge. I mean, in any sport, but you know, in life, I mean, oh, yeah, he <laughs> applies, to everything. Everything. applies to everything. Exactly. So when I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I practiced the method for longevity. We all want longevity, but we want longevity that we can enjoy mentally and physically. Right. We, we don't want to be, bed bound or in a wheelchair, but, you know, doing the New York times Sunday crossword puzzle every week. And we also don't want to be doing, uh, you know, we're physically fit, but we have dementia or Alzheimer's. So I do everything I can. There's no guarantees in life, but I'm giving my body its best chance to live a long life, both in a, in a healthy physical and mental way. And I didn't even start till I'm 67. Now I didn't even start this until my early sixties. So, you know, if for, for people who are younger, who start this, it's just going to pay more dividends. Mm. So Josh, there's still hope for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come That's on. That's right. Well, and it was interesting what, what I was going to say to your, your point there. I think a lot of our listeners are probably just listening for, okay, what is this one, one or two little nuggets I can get to help me be a better power lifter, not even looking at the bigger picture of everything. And I think, you know, two, two of the things that you said, uh, one of them with the mindset and just kind of managing your response to essentially situations you don't, you can't control how somebody speaks to you, how somebody, you know, things like that. That is essentially the experience you get when you go to a powerlifting meet as a competitor, because you're, you're sharing area with people that you don't know that are so focused on themselves that they can rub you the wrong way sometimes. Um, you're for the first time getting in front of people and, and performing your lifts. So you have the anxiety and the, I guess the, that emotional response of seeing people in the crowd watching you. And I think even if that's the only thing you get out of this, and again, I haven't done this, this, uh, right. this protocol, but that's what I guess light bulb is going off on in my head as the, you know, the little 
very specific nugget that could apply directly to power lifters. Well, think about for a second. We're, when we get into the cold, we're stressing our body. When we hold our breath, we're stressing our body. So we're, it's called adaptive stress. We're intentionally putting ourselves in stressful situations so we can improve from it. But also what it does, it, it trains your body to better, better handle stress when you're not expecting it. Or even in environments like you just described where you know you're probably going to be stressed or anxious. But it, you're, if, if you've been training your body to deal with stress naturally, then you're going to be in a better position to handle it. Yeah. All right. Well, and I think there's some illusion that um, we always think that, you know, our lives on a daily basis are in some kind of control. And um, <laughs> they're just, if you think about it, if you re actually really think about it, like really it's not, you just, you just think they are. And I think we all feel more comfortable thinking that it, but that's just denial. Like none of it is. So a powerlifting meet is kind of just a little microchasm of that <laughs> whole situation. Like you, right. you better kind of relax and surrender a little bit into life because uh, it's going to happen anyway, whether you like it to or not. Well, I know athletes, always want that little incremental advantage that they can gain over their competitors. Mm -hmm. And if you have a strong mindset, I would call that a significant uh, incremental uh, gain that you would be, you would have. Yes, absolutely. Well, and you know, we, in our sport, we are also holding our breath a lot. So being a little bit more in connection with um, diaphragmic, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that word right, diaphragmatic. I can't yeah, say no, it. Diaphragm, diaphragm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, breathing from the diaphragm yeah, yeah, um, that. is much more important in our sport than probably most other sports because the way we we breathe and we push into that belt like that's just another like mind body connection with our breath that we should be using um so i think this is a direct connection there sure. as well yeah because i mean i've been doing this now three times a day sometimes multiple times a day if i'm not feeling well um for over three years. And I know that my diaphragm is a strong muscle. I know that my lungs are being hundred percent utilized. All right. I'm, I'm every centimeter of my lungs are filling with oxygen. So that's can only benefit you in a, in a setting you just described. Awesome. And what, I guess, paraphrasing here, what are we looking at time commitment wise each day to get some benefit out of this? Because I know, you know, power lifters will spend three hours, four hours a day in the gym training, but what, what are we looking at time-wise to actually show any significant benefit? It's probably to, to do the three rounds, not counting the shower, because you're going to shower anyway, so I'm not, I'm not going to well, count some, that. Some, some of us do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you do, um, the, uh, to do a round is probably, depending on how long you hold your breath, is going to be anywhere from a minute and a half to three or four minutes. So if you do three rounds, you're looking at about eight to 12 minutes. Uh, eight to 12 to do, minutes in a, in a day. In a day, right. And I do it first thing in the morning when I wake up uh, and there's no other reason than your stomach's empty. So you can probably get a, a greater exchange of oxygen through your body. Um, breathe through your nose if you can. It's just healthier way to breathe. You can breathe, You but Wim says, breathe through any hole you have. However, you can, um, 24 hours a day, you should be breathing through your nose. That's because we generate nitric oxide, which is good for dilating our blood vessels and lots of other benefits of breathing through your nose. For doing the method, nose or mouth for those few minutes a day is okay. Yeah, so not a huge time commitment for potentially huge. Huge gains, benefit. right. Right, and it's just easy to, and I'm always happy to answer questions and talk to people who, who truly want to, are interested or, want to ask about it so don you put on uh workshops can you talk a little bit about that when they're coming sure. up yeah um i uh of course covid kind of uh, dampened the uh, the schedule that i had entering this year and i was on track to uh have three workshops a month so i'm just in the last couple of months getting geared back up and i have two workshops in february Fortunately, I guess for me, the, both of them are sold out. I have one this coming Sunday and the one on February 21st. Um, and then I'm, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm taking a, a long break to take a long walk and uh, hike the Appalachian Trail. And so I'll be gone five or six months. I'll be back in May for two or three weeks. My daughter's having a baby. So I'm going to schedule a couple classes in the May timeframe. And then I'll be doing classes back to a, a full schedule uh, when I return. But also I do private classes. If, if there's a group of two or three people, 
that, hey, let's, I can, I can do them anytime. You know, I have lots of time on my hands. So if we want to do it in a, on a weekend or at nights, uh, weekdays, doesn't matter. I can, I can do small classes too in groups. So for those who aren't able to go to a seminar, what would you recommend they do to learn more? Go, go to a wimhoffmethod.com. My instructor page is on there as well. So you can, when I'm back, or if you can, I, if, if someone's interested, I send out oh, emails uh, when I have classes coming up so people know if they want to register, if they have friends who are interested in a class that's coming up. But on the wimhoffmethod.com, WIM has a lot of information on how to practice the method how to get started. Just go to YouTube. Wim has over a, a million subscribers on his YouTube channel. So he's got, <laughs> you got an active cat. Um, so he has um, lots and lots of videos that, that from Wim, but also from lots of other people on how, to, I even have videos on my YouTube channel that put out during the early days of COVID because it was going to be good for immune system. So I didn't want to hold back and just I put it out there for, for those who want to learn the method, they can go to go to YouTube and search my name. Awesome. And um, I did notice that the uh, the fundamentals class during COVID had a, um, a discount, the online fundamentals class, I think it was 35% off. Um, and the app is free. So people can kind of follow along and learn the method that way right. as well. Yeah. Yeah. William's got a 10 week um, course available online that's mm -hmm. has been pretty heavily discounted. Awesome. Josh, you have any more? So, so you're saying Josh? there's no excuse to, to, to give this thing? It's very time. simple. It's very easy, and it can be free. So, yeah, there, you're right. Gotcha. Right, and, and after can, trying it for 30 days or so, you go, oh, wow, I can kind of see how I can feel this as being part of my routine and how it can benefit me. Sure, because when you do it in the morning, it just makes you feel good. You just because you're releasing some um, of your uh, dopamine and you just, you know, the, some of the feel-good hormones, and it's, it's a great way to start the day. And I think, you know, you, you even said this early on, Don, like when you first started, it was kind of a, you know, you thought it, thought of it as a, as a, a gimmick, a way to impress people or win a bet or something like that. Right. And it turned into way more than that. So I think that's probably, I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing here again, I've, I haven't done this uh, method. I'm thinking that's probably what a lot of people are, are looking at it to be as well. But even just the few things you mentioned that would directly benefit a, a power lifter for example, I think is worth looking into um, because let's be honest, if, if, if somebody's that serious about being a, a top level competitor in powerlifting, you know, then why the hell would you not try 12 right. minutes a day? Right. Well, and I'm, I'm a big believer in, um, you know, treat yourself like a science experiment, try things, try see things. how it feels, see, what works. see if it works. Right. right. And if it, if it doesn't work, don't do it. Yeah, you know? I agree. All right, so we, we're sending our um, listeners over to wimhoff.com, and I know we're going to have some information. Wimhoff, wimhoffmethod.com. Oh, right, I'm sorry. Right. Good catch, Josh. I'll, we'll put that in our corrections next week, um, and we can um, post to them the uh, show notes. Yep. More information, yep. links. Yep. We'll put Watching, a link. Uh, we'll put a link to Don uh, to Don's YouTube channel in there as well, so you guys can okay. check him out. And, yeah, and, and you can watch him. Uh, his progress as he hikes the Appalachian trail. Yep. All right. Here, so here, I'm going to go ahead and say this on the air. I will do the, I will try the cold showers before next week's episode. All right. All right. Just, I will just tune a little, in. Just a little bit. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, great. Thank you for joining us, Don. Really yes. Thank you guys. Time. I have really enjoyed that. And uh, Josh, glad to met you and just had a great time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, bye now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode of the Powerlifting and Power Ballads podcast, please remember to subscribe and share it with your friends.